Well, hello, this is part two of the Despicable Me Dark Side Toys. If you are unfortunate enough to miss out on episode one, it was a bunch of fun, fun, fun destroying all the nasty knockoff Despicable Me toys. But always remember, please do not attempt to do this sort of activity at home. Leave it to the professionals. Well, anyway, that's my excuse for blowing stuff up and destroying stuff. And if you remember at the end of episode one, we blew up a little minion and then we worked out that it could catch on fire. Well, let's see what happens next. So let's tickle this minion with some heat and see what happens. That'll probably do. Let's see if it keeps going. I had a very good friend of mine who was into fire science and doing all sorts of testing on materials and making sure that they had an extinguishment time. There's all sorts of regulations in relation to this. And from what I can see, that minion, the fire is getting bigger and bigger. And I tell you what, it stinks. It absolutely stinks. I'm going to have to fast forward the video here a bit because it looks like it's going to take a while to burn. The video we're watching at the moment has been sped up a fair bit, but mind you, this was still a very fast and vigorous fire. I'll be quite honest here, I was very surprised to see that this minion would burn so vigorously. And when you hear me talking again live to camera, we'll be back to normal speed video. And this thing is going to completely burn out. I actually didn't expect the whole thing to burn out like that. It's very nasty. Well, that there used to be a knockoff minion. It looks like just a bunch of burning plastic. It just absolutely stinks, the smoke coming from that. Just smells highly toxic. And that's a children's toy. Completely incinerated. And if you haven't learned something worthwhile from seeing that, well, I don't know how else I can present it. Here is a minion. Is it Stuart or Dave? It's got the two eyes. Even off, confused now. Ten dollars. And what sort of sicko is that is made out? Look at that lovely baby. It's really targeting very, very young children. This because they know that children love the minions. And I've got a funny feeling it's a money box. Got a slot there, and you can open it up at the bottom. But nevertheless, it's a dark side. And it's funny, I'll release it from here and you can start to see just how poorly this is painted and finished off because that's what Darkseid love to do. And you can see there, you know, the blue is bleeding over into the yellow. This isn't painted correctly. It just looks rough nut all over. But nevertheless, people out there pay money for it. I certainly did, but I'm presenting it to you as a bit of education. That's my excuse. <laughs> it's a Darkseid nasty. Well, here's a little minion. Interesting, it's got silver teeth. You see the way it's painted, sort of bent over a bit as well. And it's one of those things which is a, a bubble wand with some bubble mix, aimed directly at very young children. Here's some more classic dark side fodder. Is it Stuart with the one eye and Dave with the two? Correct me if I'm wrong, I always get it wrong. I'm not an expert on Despicable Me. This one's got a little button on the back, it does this. I love you. And I'll also rip you off. And this one here has got a push down button on the top here. Oh, it loves me as well. And if I get coordinated here, I can send a nice message to my subscribers. And it's oh so true. I'd hate to let these minions think just because they say I love you means they're going to be treated any differently to other dark side minions. You guys might love me, but guess who I love? Mr. Hammer. Well, I dare say we've learned another lesson in life. And there's a very old saying that comes to mind. Love hurts. I think some of the most common knockoff despicable me toys look like this. This is $5. What do you get? You get two minions and there's Gru. The artwork looks like that on the back. I mean, I think five dollars for that is ridiculous. And there's quite a few different sets of this. There's another set there. Whoever that girl is. Like I said, I'm same artwork on the back. I'm not even going to try and name her. Then there's this girl here and two minions. I guarantee you, to you these are rubbish. I've got a new despicable way of dealing with this. And what was happening was I thought five dollars a bit rich, but they were doing two for the price of one, so they're throwing in like another set and even though it was one I had that that was actually thrown in for nothing if that makes any sense but there's also much grander packs than this one 
with the larger packs this one cost me eight dollars and it came with one two three four minions doing all sorts of funky stuff what do you think of that one there they got stands as well which is sort of interesting but you can go better than that here's another pack here what have we got here one two minions that girl and grew and on the next to grew is another two minions and how much did that cost me seven dollars so as you can see there's some crazy price variations going on seven dollars for that eight dollars for that even though it's smaller you know the prices on this knockoff despicable me stuff is crazy you can see underneath the eight dollar tag there is actually twelve dollars paying five dollars for that is completely crazy and it had me go to the shops and i thought well i'll go and hunt down some real despicable me toys well i live in australia and it's got some crazy prices i can see the despicable me minions are still for sale from the original film guess how much i paid for these guys ten dollars each but if you're the sort who wants the latest and greatest and you're keeping up with the joneses you can go and get the despicable me two figures guess how much these guys cost you want to have a guess in australia how much would you pay for a minion let's turn it over and take a look remembering these are real mccoy products 1995 you might as well call that 20 dollars for a little minion well is it just a minion thing let's take a look at Gru's price how much is Gru? oh the same price they say these things are hyper popular and what i couldn't work out was a minion like that that size was basically 20 dollars but i can go and buy one like this which has got a rocket launcher for 24 dollars so 24 dollars versus 20 there and this one here even has some extra features if i push that button there look at that and sure i certainly was looking around at the price i think because toy prices in australia are pretty high it leaves the dark side stuff with lots of leeway to pull off some silly prices remembering that i'm paying 24 dollars a pop for those minions there sure they're great and they're not going to bust on you and you're going to have lots of fun and they've got you know far more playability than the knockoff stuff but when I see things like this, you know, the 1995 for those little ones there, I mean, it just shows you just how popular this is. And people were buying them at that price. Well, I bought all those, didn't I? So if these toys were out of your price range, and I'm sure most people would see the prices on those and think, unless you're a real fan and really going for it and you wanted to really impress your children, you'd be buying that stuff. The best thing to do was when they had them was to get the McDonald's Happy Meal toys, which were the Despicable Me theme. These were fantastic. You don't need to buy the meal, you can go and buy the toy independently for just $2. And these were really popular when they were on. It was a while back now, and they had little features as well. There's a light in that one, he claps. And the guy on the skate, is that Stuart on the skateboard? Got a little rocket pack on his back, they look great. These were the best little toys to get. The Happy Meal toys can be a little bit hit and miss at the best of times. Occasionally you get some really fantastic designs. I thought these were great. And I'll tell you what. I sort of struggled to get this set here but as you know if you know me i'm a bit of a happy meal toy collector so when you're looking at overall price if i was going to buy this whole set here it's two four six eight ten twelve dollars for all that wonderful minion action that seems to go on forever and ever twelve dollars versus what was it 1995 for a single minion and versus the original price on that there for that set there was twelve dollars and it came down to eight and it's all dark side nasty stuff well i guarantee to you these are going to be absolutely not a rubbish and i've got a brand new way of uh, hopefully disposing of these I'm trying to make this the greatest dark side video ever that i've had on my channel and um everyone likes to speak with me i certainly do my children love this show or the films and i think we want to make this a very special little episode. They just keep coming out, there's so much of them. Look at that. Keep making the It's interesting, there's a strange odour coming from this. This weird plastic odour. Let's take a look at this. Well, there you go. Gru's lost his pants. That's what you're dealing with. It's just complete rubbish. You notice there's a gun here. Is that one of Gru's guns? And the minions, they just don't feel right. I mean, some of them got moving bits. Look at that. You just open this thing up. Look at that. It's just complete utter rubbish. I don't understand how this stuff is in the stores where I live. There's just so much of it about. Who's policing this? And this is aimed at really young children. It's really, really sickening. 
Well, look at this minion here. Remember how fancy the packaging was and it was so inexpensive, or seemingly so inexpensive? Look at this. No effort at all, I can open it up. Let me pick up another one. You're probably thinking, oh no, these are pretty set up, Leah. No, look at that. I can, no effort at all, I can just open it up. And you've got bits which have become choking hazards. I mean, where in the hell is Department of Fair Trading in Australia? Wake up yourselves, guys. Well, I'll take a look at this girl here. I don't know her name. I don't even know if she looks right. That versus what you see in the film. Let's manipulate her a little bit. I mean, look at that. This is just so, so bad. Oh, how bad can it... This is actually some of the worst dark side stuff I've come across. You know, this is worse than the cars. The car stuff that I've been seeing. This is really embarrassing. Where's that pink girl? I bet it's the same deal with her. She'll just sort of fall apart. Yep. She's not as bad. It's a bit harder to pull her apart. She's much smaller. But um, it doesn't look good, does it? It just doesn't look good at all. Well, considering the nightmare I've got on my hands here, it has me curious. Let's take a look at a real McCoy minion. Remember, this is a $19.95 toy. They say if you shopped around, you'd probably get it a lot less. And if you're in the USA, you're probably picking it up for $5 a pop. Maybe you're over there in the USA, you can tell me how much you buy these for. I bet you there's no problem with this boy. I bet you this is a really nice toy. And sure enough, I've got him in my hands here, but I'm pulling him, trying to pull him apart. He's not going to come apart because he's made correctly. You know, I'm sort of was crying about the price before, but maybe it's actually well worth paying that money because this thing isn't going to fall apart in your hands. I can't squeeze this and make it fall apart. Yep, I can't pull the arms out. Yeah, it's a much, much better toy than that other rubbish that I've got on the table. Well, I've got a new way to deal with this toy nightmare, and I guarantee to you that it is very despicable. This new machine in Dark Side Torture looks something like this, and we're going to feed these minions inside and see how they survive. Part of my evil plan is to capture the toys getting destroyed from underneath. Will I be able to pull this off? Well guys, it is seriously messed up in there. I got the idea for doing this from an Australian YouTuber called Aussie50. I've been watching his stuff for a very long time on YouTube. He's a fantastic channel if you want to learn about stuff, materials, and just, you know, be into someone who's very knowledgeable. And I'll tell you what, that is very, very broken. You're probably wondering why I went through and put a Thomas the Tank in there. I wanted to show 
the differences between a certain type of plastic and the ones which, which the Despicable Me toys are made of. These were quite resilient, actually, but we're dealing with a, a plastic or a rubber. Oh, there's a motor from Thomas, um, which is very different to the Thomas character, and he's just been completely annihilated. But what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll separate the two apart because I'll probably pull that Thomas crunch up as a separate video. Okay, I have sorted them out. There is the Despicable Me Dark Side toys in one debris field, and there is the Thomas and Knockoff Annie in the other debris field. It's interesting because at first glance, when you look at the Despicable Me debris field, you think, well, not much has changed. But the closer you examine this stuff, the more damage you notice that's gone on. And it's a very interesting sort of plastic in the fact that it hasn't shattered, but when the blades have come down in that machine, it's done some very decisive cuts. And it does break in a very different way to the Thomas character. You can see it on Gru's body here, the way that is split. That's some major thick piece of plastic there. But nevertheless, there are some very interesting looks here. And look at Gru's face there like someone tried to give him a new smile. That minion there doesn't look very damaged but once you start to play with it you see it has been fatally wounded. Very soft and rubbery this plastic. It doesn't shatter but it does get affected once you put it through a very menacing machine. And the body of Gru here you're thinking well it looks almost intact and untouched. Well no, once you start to have a bit of a closer look you see it's got some major defects going on. The under the legs are being cut. Like I said the longer you look at this the more damage you see and the more interesting it looks. Well, if you have skipped through this video, you would have missed out on a whole ton of destructive fun. But along the way, hopefully I've taught you something about how dangerous and silly it is to ever engage with these knockoff toys. From what I can see when I purchase these knockoff toys, there are lots of people buying them. And one wonders whether the parents ever think of the massive risks they take when they bring these into the home. The saddest aspect to these Despicable Me toys, especially the Minions, is they are aimed at very young children. And they're the sorts of children who tend to put things in their mouth and sadly so easily choke. And what you see on the table there is only the tip of the iceberg. I can bring in all sorts of hyper popular brands which have been knocked off and now are so readily available in the city where I live. It really has me wondering when is this madness going to stop? So there's an insight into the Dark Side Despicable Me toys, and this was a split episode. Part 2 is actually the extension of Part 1, but I split it because it was going to be such a long video, and I know long videos tend to suffer on YouTube. But I'm just hoping that these videos do two very important things. The first thing is entertain you. The second thing is educate you. And if I fail to do that, well, I'd better stop making videos. Anyway, as always, thanks for your time, and bye for now. And for what I thought was a total ripoff, those packs for, and that's a fail. So you can see that was originally $12, there's $12 under the $8 ticket there. Like I said before, that for $5 is total crap. Slow-mo time.